Hello, this is Michael from Devo.com with another video tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about color correction inside of After Effects and Photoshop. Now I've seen a lot of videos on color adjustment and color uh, enhancement. However, this tutorial will focus on accurate color. Now the way we go about that is adjusting the uh, RGB values properly. So without further ado, let's jump in. All right, so I've got After Effects open here with my footage. Here's the original and I'll show you the after. You can see the contrast and really punchy colors uh, compared to the flat original footage. Again, here's the before and after. So let's get started. Uh, I picked this footage because it's a prime example of all three elements we need. We need highlight. Here's the white highlight. Uh, a diffuse highlight, which means it's, it's not blown out. Uh, and then the midtone, some gray, neutral gray, and then the shadow uh, down by these tires. And um, even if your footage doesn't have all three of these elements, the highlights, midtones, and shadows, you still can get by with midtones or even uh, decent highlights because the human eye tends to only notice uh, color shifts in those brighter areas, the highlights and midtones. So if you have a if you have a, a piece of footage that has a good midtone or or a, a neutral white, then then you can use this technique as well. So I've picked the frame. I'm going to go to composition, save frame as. Photoshop layers and I've called this After Effects color correction. No, we're going to go um, airplane. We're going to call it the uh, name of my footage. Click save. We're going to go into Photoshop and bring that PSD in. All right, so we have the frame in Photoshop, and we're gonna go to the color picker. No, the eyedropper tool. And uh, right click and make sure it's on three by three average. And click again here, go to the color sampler tool. Now this is gonna create three sampling areas for us to correct. And you can see up here in the info panel as I'm Hovering over things, make sure this is displayed. If you don't have it displayed, go up to Window and Info or F8. So um, you can see here, I'm hovering over these areas and a highlight area. Um, basically, we're looking for places that have equal or should be equal values. So as I'm hovering over this here, you can see up here that the red and green are pretty similar, 197, 190, but then the blue is way down to 170. That's okay because we'll be fixing that and we know that it uh, should be white. So we're going to sample this area by simply clicking on it. You can see that number one there and this little guy here comes up and that'll be our highlight box. Okay. We're going to look for our midtone. I've chosen uh, this area on the plane. As you can see, I'm hovering over here up in the info panel. The values, uh, again, red and green are pretty close, but the blue is way off. We'll be fixing that. We know it. it, it is and should be gray. So we're going to sample that area. We have a two right next to it, and that's this guy here. So we got highlights, midtones. Now we need a shadow area. And generally you don't want cast shadows such as this area here under the plane because it, uh, it'll probably have uh, color shifts and uh, reflections and you know the tan color of the concrete. 
So we're going to choose this area on the tire. If you're looking up in the info panel, we got 30, 32, and 33. So the shadow areas are pretty good. Not as important because the human eye can't uh, discern that much uh, in the shadow areas, but we're going to color correct it anyways. So we have our three uh, sampling areas, one, two, and three, or highlight, midtone, and shadow. So now that we have those in place, we're going to create a new adjustment layer. And you can't see it on the screen here, but it's called curves. And I'll just do it up here. Uh, layer, uh, new adjustment layer, curves. And call it whatever you want. And we're going to go down to each individual channel since images and videos are generally made up of RGB channels. So uh, here's where the work begins. We're going to hold down control and click near or exactly on each of these positions. This will create a, an anchor on the curve for this channel in the highlight area, okay? I'll highlight midtone and shadow for the red channel. So purposes for purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to uh, get near those positions and control click, control click. You can see they're creating anchors up here and control click. So we have highlight, midtone, and shadow. I'm going to go to the green channel. I'm going to do it again. Control click, control click, and control click. Go to the blue channel. Control click, control click, control click. Um, this may seem a little cumbersome to some people, but uh, it's 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 a more accurate way of correcting color. I'm not a professional uh, color correction person, but uh, I found this method very effective. All right, so we have all our anchors on each of the channels. So we're going to look at these. We're going to be keeping an eye on these boxes, basically. So we have 197, 190, and 170. And we're going to be focusing on red for now. And the first column is the original RGB values. And the next column are the adjusted or changed values. So basically, we want to get all these values the same. So. Uh, let's say I'm going to bring 197 down to 190. So we go to the highlight uh, anchor and bring it down this way. You don't go up and down vertically. You kind of go at a 45 degree angle perpendicular to the curve. So we're going to bring it down. As you're watching over here, watch this value. Bring it down to 190. Okay. Now we're going to go <clears throat> over to midtones. And we're looking at these numbers. Let's say we'll bring we'll bring red down to 129 in the midtone right here. Okay, watch those values. Boom, 129. Okay, let's move on to shadows. We got 31, 32, and 32. Got to bring up the red just a tad. Okay, we got 32 all through in the shadow area. All right, now we're looking here at green. Green matches red, they're equal. They're equal in the midtone and they're equal in the shadow. So we don't need to even touch green right now. We're gonna move on to blue. If I'm going too fast, you can just pause. So in the blue area, we can see that we need to increase it quite a bit in the highlight area. Remember one is highlight, two is midtone, three is shadow. So let's raise that value up to 190, way up. Okay, that looks good. We'll move on to midtone. We got 115. Let's boost it up to 129. Approximately there. Oh, that went down a little bit. Again, these are approximate. You don't have to be precise unless you need to be or you want to be. Okay, that looks good. We've got uh, our adjusted values here. Um, highlight values should be in the 245 range. Right now they're only 190, but the point is to get them even. 
um, and mid-tone should be in the 135 range and shadow should be no lower than 12. So uh, we'll, we'll adjust those in a little bit. So we're gonna click OK. And actually we need to save that, so I'm double click on this adjustment layer. We're gonna click on this little guy here and click Save Preset. And I'm gonna save it as Airplane. Since that's the frame, we're gonna go back to After Effects. And we're going to go into the Effects and Presets uh, panel, go under Color Correction and find the curves adjustment or effect. Drag it onto your footage and go to your effects, uh, effect control panel. And all you have to do is click this little folder and open your curve. Boom, you have your adjusted footage, just like that. No messing around in curves, trying to figure it out, trying to make it look good. You've now adjusted and corrected your color by numbers. So that's basically it. I'm just going to um, actually boost the contrast. It's, it's, it's corrected right now, but it's still flat. So I'm going to add a levels adjustment. And this is very simple um, method. And you can see the graph here. Um, there's a lot of space, so we're going to bring those highlights on this end in. Uh, just about to there, the first uptick on the, on the histogram. And the shadow area we're going to bring in to about there. And then from there, basically, you can choose to change the mid-tones however you like. Uh, personal preference or, um, or or just leave it the way it is. But there you go, you have your true color corrected image uh, by the numbers and it's contrasty and not blown out. There's a little blown out highlights, but uh, not terrible. And uh, so we're, I'm just gonna move on quick to show you how to do it to actually bring the composition into After Effects, or excuse me, Premiere. It's getting late, it's very late. Um, okay, File, uh, Adobe Dynamic Link, Import After Effects Composition. Now, you're not gonna have this Adobe Dynamic Link feature if you bought Premiere and After Effects separately. You have to buy it in the, the um, production suite or the master collection. Um, so Adobe Dynamic Link, import After Effects composition. We're going to uh, choose the composition in the After Effects project file. Uh, we'll just do the one we just did called Airplane, click OK. And there you go. You have a linked, uh, linked after Effects file right inside of Premiere. You can edit it, and I, I prefer Premiere to edit and chop up my videos more than After Effects, since After Effects is uh, more of a compositing and rendering program. So uh, I find the Adobe Dynamic Link feature to be very handy. Uh, and one more tip, you can see it's pretty jerky here. That's because it's trying to render every color corrected frame. So we're going to go back into After Effects, and it's all linked dynamically. So if I turn the effects off, this little button here, the color correction is off. And we'll go back to Premiere, and you can see it updated automatically. And so you can edit your footage a lot easier that way, quicker that way. And once you're ready to render, just remember to go back into After Effects, turn that effects uh, button back on, come back into Premiere, It'll update and then you can render. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. And uh, if you have questions or comments, just comment below and uh, bestow a like. Thank you.